Snort's an extremely popular tool in cybersecurity, especially in highly technical roles like security operations centers. Even if you aren't gonna work in a role that requires you to use Snort a lot, if at all, it's still a good exercise to learn what it can do. In this video, we're gonna talk about what Snort is, how it works, then we're gonna install Snort, and finally we'll talk about Snort rules and we'll even write a custom rule. Grab a snack or a drink and let's get started. So at its core, Snort is an open source network intrusion detection and prevention system, so an IDS and an IPS, that monitors network traffic and it identifies potentially malicious activities on IP networks. Snort detects malicious packets using a rule-based language that combines inspection methods including protocol, signature, and anomaly-based inspection. All this inspection is done with the help of rules to look for suspicious activity. Snort's been around since the late 1990s and later it went on to be purchased by Cisco. Now Talos is another group that you need to know when it comes to Snort because they help improve the product. You can read more about that on their website. When it comes to intrusion detection and prevention systems, the placement of your sensors absolutely matters. Typically, we might use something called a span port or port mirroring to copy all the traffic from one port or from the network to our IPS or IDS. What we don't necessarily always want is our IDS or IPS to be in line, meaning all the traffic goes through it. So if it's overloaded and it crashes, that's gonna kill all the traffic. Typically, we do see IPSs in line though. It's also important to understand that we might have multiple IPSs or IDS sensors on our network to monitor multiple locations on our network. All right, let's talk about some of the common use cases for why you might use Snort. Some of the most common use cases include real-time network traffic monitoring, protocol analysis, content matching based on rules, operating system fingerprinting, and also Snort's compatible with any operating system. Other use cases that you might also see include packet sniffing and logging, alerting based on rules, and detecting attacks like denial of service attacks. Now that you know more about Snort, let's talk about how it works. So how does Snort work exactly? Well, Snort monitors network traffic and it compares it against a Snort rule set that's defined by users inside of a configuration file. Snort takes those rules, it compares it against traffic, and it looks for a match. There's several different flags or options that you can use with Snort. There's three main flags that you need to know about. There's sniffer mode, which reads the TCP IP packets and prints out the information on the console. There's packet logger mode, which logs incoming TCP IP packets in a directory on the disk or the hard drive for further analysis. And then there's NIDS mode, which is when Snort determines whether to perform an action on the traffic based on its rules. Now keep in mind for our demo, we're gonna be using Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution. So if you wanna follow along exactly, you need to make sure you have that operating system. Let's go ahead and dive into our lab environment and we'll install Snort. This is our Linux environment that we're gonna use for this video. This is Ubuntu, which is a distribution of Linux or a version of Linux. If you don't already have a Linux system set up or a Linux virtual machine, make sure that you check out my video on how to install Linux as a virtual machine. Also make sure to check out the video that I did on the Linux basics, where I walk you through the basics of the operating system and give you key things like commands, file structure, and other important things that you need to know about. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to open a terminal window and we need to make sure that this system is fully up to date. So this command is going to first check for updates and then if there's any updates, it's going to install it and say yes to installing it. So we'll run this command and let this run. If it needs to update anything, just make sure that it does it first. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually install Snort. So we use this command here. So this wants to know what our home network is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new terminal window and we need to type ifconfig or IPADDR will give you the same information, depending on which version of Linux that you're using. But what we're looking for is the IP address of our network adapter here. So there is our IP address, and it's a slash 24 network. So we're going to use this section of the IP address right here. And we'll change this to a slash 24 network. And we'll scroll down with the down arrow, and we'll hit return on OK. All right, so now that that's installed, we need to actually put our network card or a network interface card into promiscuous mode. Basically with network cards, what happens is they're configured to only receive the data that's meant for them as the destination. So by default, you're not gonna see all the packets that are coming across the network. And that's what we're gonna change with promiscuous mode. 
So we're gonna type sudo ip link set. And then if we go back to this other window here, again, remember this is our network interface card name. So that's what we need to use. So ENS 33 is mine. Yours is probably gonna be something different, but type whatever it is into here. And then promisc on. Okay. And then if we go back here to this other window and we use that same command, we're gonna see that Promisc is now on that network interface card. So that's a good sign. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the snort configuration file and make an edit inside of there. So we're gonna type sudo and I'm gonna actually make sure that I have vim installed first before I do this. And vim is just a command line editor. You can really use whatever you want. It's just the one that I prefer. So now we're gonna edit the configuration file. All right, so in this video, we're not really gonna dive into the actual configuration file, but there's a lot of good information in here. There's basically even a table of contents that you can look at and you can check out the different sections and see what all is included in there. But again, we're not gonna worry about that for this video. All right, so what we need is we need step one and there's this home underscore net variable. So we're actually gonna change that. So we'll go down here and we'll hit I, and this is where we wanna put in that same network. So 192, 168, 163. Let me just double check and make sure that that is what it was. Yep, 163. Dot zero slash 24. And then we'll hit escape and we'll do shift colon right quit and hit return. There we go. Now we successfully modify the configuration file and Snort knows which network is our home network. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And let's take a second to talk about Cyber Training Pro. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At Cyber Training Pro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Now that we've installed Snort, we need to talk about Snort rules. As we briefly discussed, Snort uses rules to look for malicious traffic. There's four different sources that you can use to acquire your Snort rules. First, we have community rules. These are free rules that are created by the Snort community and they don't require an account. Then you have registered rules. These are free rules that are released 30 days after subscribers receive them. You have to have an account to do this. Then we have subscriber rules. These require a paid subscription, but these are the most current rules. And then finally, of course, you can build your own custom rules. So here's an example diagram of what a Snort rule looks like. Don't worry, we're gonna actually break this down. One of the important things to know is that Snort doesn't operate like a firewall where it processes the rules in the order that they appear in the configuration. Instead, Snort processes rules based on the rule type, which tells it which action to take against that traffic. We have alert rules, which generate an alert when traffic matches. We have block rules, which make Snort block suspicious traffic that matches in all subsequent packets in the network flow. We have drop rules, which drop the packet as soon as the alert is generated. We have logging rules, which log the packet as soon as the alert is generated. And we have pass rules, which ignores a suspicious packet and marks it as passed. So ultimately, Snort rules define the action to take when the traffic matches the rule. There's five main pieces that you need to know about when it comes to Snort rules. Action to take is the first component that you declare in a Snort rule. You have IP addresses, so the source and the destination. You have port numbers, the source and the destination port numbers. You have the direction of the traffic, 
For a single direction, you can just use the arrow or you can have bi-directional with double arrows. And then the inspection protocol, so layer three, IP and ICMP, and layer four, TCP and UDP protocols. The rule options define the network traffic criteria that has to match the rule. The message to display when rule matches explains the purpose of the rule. The flow state specifies the session properties to check for a given packet. The content or the pattern, this specifies the content or the pattern that it needs to find in the packet's payload or non-payload data. The service or the application protocol. This instructs Snort to identify the content or the pattern either on the traffic of the specified application layer service or the source and the destination ports specified in the rule header. And then we have the Snort ID or the SID and the revision number or the rev. These uniquely identify a Snort rule with the SID or uniquely identifies the revision number of a Snort rule with the rev. Okay, let's take a look at a custom Snort rule. The rule that we have on the screen here is gonna alert if ping packets are detected. So the rule type is alert, the traffic type is ICMP, the source IP and the port is any, any, so any source IP and any port. The traffic direction is from any source to any IP in the home net network variable on any port. And we have our message that gets generated if the content is an ICMP packet. And then we have our SID and our rev. All right, let's dive back into our lab environment and configure a custom rule for Snort. Now we're gonna modify the Snort rules and we're going to include a custom rule. So we need to edit the rules file. So we're gonna do vim etsy snort rules because that's the directory where the rules are stored. And then we have this file local.rules that we're gonna edit. So we'll hit return. So this is where you're gonna add custom rules that you create and that you wanna look for. So we'll scroll down to the bottom here, we'll hit I and we'll add a new line. So anything that has a pound sign or a hashtag, that is gonna be considered a comment and it won't consider any of that information. So keep that in mind. If you wanted to actually look for certain rules or use certain information configuration settings, make sure it doesn't have that hash symbol. So the rule that we're gonna use is the one that we just talked about. And again, if you forgot what it is, we're gonna alert on any ping coming from any source to our home network on any port. We're gonna get the message ping detected. And then here's our SID and our revision number. So we'll hit escape, colon WQ for write quit and hit return. Now we need to execute the command to start snort so that way it starts looking for traffic and trying to find our custom rule. All right, so this is the command that we're gonna use. So we're gonna run snort. The dash Q means to run it in quiet mode. Dash L, this is where we're gonna output a log file. This is gonna be our interface, so ENS33. We wanna output it to the console so we can see the actual traffic if it finds matches. And then we're gonna use this configuration file. If you ever have to look up what specific options are available to you, you can totally open up a new window or do it in the same window and use the man pages, so man snort, and this will give you all the information that you need as far as the different options and how you can use them with snort. So we'll go back here and we're gonna run this command. If it does this and it's not saying anything, that means it's running successfully. So any traffic that matches a rule, it should pop up in here. Now to successfully do this, you do need another machine so you can actually ping that target system that's running Snort. Mine, in this case, is a Kali Linux box, which has a lot of different security tools on it. We're not really gonna use any of those in this video. We're just gonna use ping, so it could be a Windows system, it could be another Ubuntu Linux system, it could be really whatever, but you just need another system. So we're gonna hit return on here because we're gonna ping our target system. All right, so it's generating pings. We can see on this other system that's running Snort that it is actively catching those alerts and it's saying ping detected. So, and it's giving us the IP addresses where it's originating from and where it's going to. So if we cancel this with control C, again, if you remember, this is where we're outputting our log files. And we can see we have a bunch of different log files in here that we can go back and look at them. Even though we've only scratched the surface of Snort, there's a lot more that you can do to protect your networks. 
If you plan on working in a technical cybersecurity role, I highly recommend doing more research and becoming comfortable with Snort. At minimum, you need to be comfortable with reading Snort rules and writing a basic custom rule, as I've definitely been asked about this in interviews. Question of the day, what are some cybersecurity tools that you've either heard about or that you've actually used? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.